Good morning, and uh, Jane Fonda sends regards. Um, this is my fifth G for G, and 10 years ago I was looking for a great way to start my uh, talk. I had nothing, and then three hours before I was about to go on, my husband, who's sitting right there, said he was in front of Hooters, and a young lady said to him, are you with the weirdos at the Ritz? <laughs> and he said, my wife is. <laughs> So once again, I am awed and honored and delighted to be with the weirdos. You couldn't find a better group of people. And new G for G, new Flexagon. Uh, what I have here is a, a hexagonal shaped hexaflexagon. But before I talk about that, I just want to briefly say that the wonderful, yes, the, the wonderful images that Bruce McLean had in his talk that he didn't have time to credit are made by my sister and they're on her site, eighthsquare.com. She has some wonderful hexaflexagon designs and uh, hexaflexagon fever runs in the family. Uh, okay, so here is uh, my flexagon. Uh, as you know, the classic hexaflexagon is made out of equilateral triangles, but this one is made out of isosceles, right triangles. And um, you need uh, 12 triangles to make the hexaflexagon shape and 10 triangles to make a partial pinwheel, which is also possible. And I, because this has six sides and eight faces, and I'm using faces and colors interchangeably for our purposes here, I call it the octa isosceles hexaflexagon. Now only red and blue have at least 10 triangles, so all the other colors have to combine with each other to make a complete surface. And you start, let's go to the tape, the video, the regular tape. And uh, this is the straight strip that you work from, and this is all in your g for g exchange gift. And you can see an obviously repeating pattern on this side and a not so obviously repeating pattern on this side. <laughs> but it does repeat. And you simply wind up the uh, hexaflexagon by, um, you wind it around itself, you make a spiral, and you're going to have only blue, red, white, and black on the outside of the spiral. And when you're all done, you have this. And there are at least three ways to flex. Now, flexagons have an, with me anyway, they have an obnoxious habit of not telling you everything they can do until you go to press and everything's printed and the hexaflexagon is in the exchange <coughs> gift, all packed and ready to go. So I actually stumbled on another way to flex last Monday while I was practicing this talk. So only two of the flexing methods are in your handout. But anyway, let's start. You can do what I call the twist flex. And you twist it. You twist like you did last summer. And you keep twisting. And four twists get you back to the beginning. Then you can do what I call the pinch and pull. Pinch here. You make a, like a little birdie beak. G for G. And you open up into a square, and then you pinch back. There are hanging triangles here that help you because you're going to pinch squares, uh, triangles that are perpendicular. You pinch and you pull, and then you're going to get new colors. And the one I discovered last Monday is kind of a pull and tuck. You pull and you tuck and you open, and you pull, and you tuck, and you open. And I think this does, here's the partial pinwheel I told you about, the shape change. And I think this will lead to a tuck, Tuckerman Traverse, though I haven't tested that out yet, but you can continually flex with that. And uh, another obnoxious thing it, it revealed to me, I don't know how this happens, but once in a while when I'm flexing, I still have to discover this, the spiral turns itself inside out. So the uh, outside colors become inside and vice versa. So you're getting a totally different set of colors for this twist flex position. Come on, there we go. And in your handout, I show that there are at least 65 different combinations you can make in the regular mode before you go through that wormhole. And each of these color patterns has at least two triangles of red, blue, black, and white, which are on the, the outside of the spiral. 
But when you go through the wormhole, of course, you're going to get a whole new set of color combinations. So I've counted at least 50 more that you can make. So it's full of surprises. And uh, it does a few other things. How am I doing for time? Doing very well. OK. It can also collapse into a little fractal of itself. It can also uh, twist into a square. You can collapse it down into a square, uh, this shape. And, and that has a few flexes in it. And it's, it stays stable for a while before it pops out into the, the hexagon again. And I think this all shows that there's a whole big world of straight strip flexagons all waiting to be discovered and explored and analyzed and uh, enjoyed and most of all to get obsessed with. <laughs> and if there are any more mathematicians out there willing to analyze this baby, I'd love to work with you. Thank you very much.